At the end of last year, a new architecture called Mamba was released. Mamba allows for the same token generation speed irrespective of context length. It works by compressing each token into storage so that it avoids having to pay attention to each of those previous tokens when it's generating the next one. I'm going to describe some of the basics of Mamba, give you some basic equations and some notebooks that you can run through. We're still in the early days, but the idea of compressing the context, I think is a good one. And that will allow us to move beyond the current transformer design. For agenda, I'm going to start off and describe what a state space model is. That's what Mamba is. And I'm going to cast it by comparing with a transformer, which many of you will be familiar with. I'll then go through some very simple Mamba maths just to show you the basics of how it works before moving to a notebook that I'll put a link to below so you can move through and inference Mamba by yourself. I'll then make a few comments on training Mamba. The tools are really not mature, so it's quite difficult to train at the moment. For example, there are no tools like LoRa and only basic functionalities are supported by the Hugging Face Trainer. Nonetheless, I'll quickly give you a look at that and I've put a copy of it into the advanced fine tuning repo for those who have purchased lifetime access. And I'll finish off with a few comments on practical issues today around the Mamba architecture and where I think it can improve over the current transformers. To understand Mamba, let's start by reviewing how transformers work. So here I have a sequence of colors and my goal is to predict the next color. So quite simply, I have red and then blue and I'm gonna predict the next color here. And when we work with transformers, this works by paying attention. So calculating the relationship between the previous token and each of the tokens before that. So here, given we have two known tokens, we are going to run attention between these and then make a prediction of the third token. And this process will continue on. So when predicting the fourth token here, we're going to have attention between the third and the second and between the third and the first. And so on again, when we move to predict the fifth token, we now are paying attention and computing the relationship between four and three, four and two, and four and one. Now we also still make use of the relationships between three and two and three and one, and also two and one, but those values have been stored from the previous steps. So at every incremental step, I'm showing you here the incremental relationships that need to be calculated through the mechanism of attention. So this is how transformer works. And as you can see, the further we get into a sequence, or the longer the starting sequence, here I've just started with two, the more the number of calculations that need to be done in attention. And this is what makes it become computationally expensive once you get to longer and longer sequences with transformers. So let's now move to a state space model. So in this case, I'm going to start off with one token and it's red. And I'm going to predict the next token. And the way this works is by having a little piece of storage here, which is called a state space. You can think of it, it is either a vector or it could be a two by two matrix, uh, sorry, a, a matrix that has two dimensions. But either way, it's got a certain amount of storage and you take the input token and through some kind of function, that token will be compressed and stored within the state space. So it's being stored inside this vector. And then this state space here is going to be used to calculate the prediction. So this is how Mamba would take in a first token. It would use that token to update the state space, which is just storage, and then use that storage to make a prediction of the next token. And notice here, when we move to the second token, Mamba completely throws out the first token. So we no longer even, even pay any attention to the first token. Any information we need from that first token is stored within the state space in compressed form. So again, for the second token, we take it in through a mathematical function and update the state space. So we basically compress the information that's in token two into this storage. And then we use this storage, which you can think of again as a vector. We use it to calculate a prediction of the third token. Now, when we come to the third token and predicting the fourth token, you can see we've thrown out the first and the second tokens because they are being stored in a compressed form 
within this state space here, which again is just a very big vector. And now token three is going to be transformed so that we update the state space H and we're going to then use this state space to predict uh, token four here. So you can see in every case with the state space model, and we can move again to step four where we compress token four and predict token five. At every step, we're throwing away all of the old tokens. So unlike a transformer, in the state, state space model, we have the benefit that we don't need to do new calculations on every token generation. We don't need to go back and make those calculations. Just to say that once more, here when we're predicting token five with a transformer, we do have to calculate the attention between this previous token that has newly become available and all of the previous tokens. Whereas in the state space model, because we're compressing each new token as we go, we don't need to do these previous calculations. We just need to update the state space and then calculate the prediction. So if you look at it in terms of the vectors that we need to save, in transformer, we have all of the input tokens. Say we have input token x1 represented by a vector, x2, x3, and so on for each input in the sequence. And we need to store each of those. And when we generate a new token, we need to run attention between the most recently available token and all of those previous vectors. Now, in a state space model, all we consider is the most recent token that we've received. We forget about everything in the past. We just consider the most recent token and we consider H, which is the state space. Now, H contains information, compressed information on all the previous tokens. So here's the crux of transformers versus Mamba. In transformers, as the sequence gets longer and longer, you've got more calculations to make. In Mamba, you don't because you're updating the size of this state space. However, because you need to compress all of the information and store it, you have this vector H, you have this storage H, and it's going to need to be bigger because it's got to store the information content of many vectors. It's going to need to be much bigger than one vector X or say X1. So if you had a really short sequence, and this is looking at it in very simplified terms, if you had a very short sequence, it might be punitive because you have to consider the calculations for this storage. But as your sequences become longer and longer, this is where Mamba is really beneficial because you still only have to make this computation based on H. You don't have to calculate all of the previous tokens. So with that, let's look at in mathematical terms, how we can achieve this behavior here. How can we uh, develop some equations for the state space so that we can update it when we have a new token? And then how can we calculate a prediction for a new token? To help explain the maths, I'm going to use ChatGPT with a chat that I've developed earlier. So we're going to talk about state space language models, and we're going to talk about how to update the state, the storage H, based on the incoming vector X1, and then how to calculate the new vector X2. So we'll define a state as H, and we're going to talk about updating H. And as I said, given an input X, the question is how to update H. So when we say update H, what I mean is what's the delta H? What's the change in H we want to bring about when there's a new X? And what do we want to make that depend upon? Well, there are two things that make sense to make it dependent on. One is the input that's coming in, but also the current state. So if you think of the memory as saying, I don't want to know anything about dogs, but the input is dog, then that means you probably want to ignore dog. And therefore, you can see that it's important to consider not just the latest input, but also the memory. So we'll make delta H dependent on X, and we'll make it dependent on the current state H. Now, if you want to do a very simple relationship where H, where the update depends on H and X, the simplest is always linear. So here we've got a linear expression where we've got delta H, it says equals, but I really mean is scaling with A, which is just a constant times h plus b times x. So this is the simplest way you could update the state by making it dependent on this on the storage and also on the input. So we've got the linear relationship. 
And there's actually one thing missing here from the right-hand side of the equation. And that's, if this is a delta H, then we need to have an increment on the right-hand side. So here I've got this small delta. And what this means is we're going to update the state of the storage and we're going to do it in a way that depends linearly on the storage itself and the input and the size of the update we make, which you can kind of think of as between zero and one, just very loosely. The size of the update we're going to make is going to depend on how delta is set. And now we're going to make some of these parameters trainable. So the idea of a state space model is you train on a bunch of data with delta trainable, with A trainable, and with B trainable. And you figure out these matrices, which will remain constant when you go to inference. And that will provide you with a state, state, state space model that allows you to update H. Now that we know how to calculate the update on H, we can calculate H2. So that's going to be quite simple. We'll have H2 is equal to H1, which is the previous state, plus the update, which we've already got the formula for. So now that we have the new state, we need to ask how can we calculate the new value of x, so the output of x. And the very simplest way we can do that is by multiplying um, x1 by the state. So we take the new state h2 and we simply multiply it by the input in order to get the output. And you'll see here, there's again, uh, there's a trainable constant c that can be put in front. So if we pull these equations together now for a state space model, first we have an equation to get an updated state, which is linearly dependent on the state itself and the input vector. And then we have an equation to get the output vector. And that's our state space model. Now it's not a selective state space model like Mamba. That's actually why Mamba is called Mamba, because it's reminiscent of snakes and snakes say hiss. And so there's an extra S there that makes it selective. So Mamba does not use constant values in all of the cases. It makes these trainable matrices here, it actually makes them linear functions of the inputs. And what this means is when Mamba is compressing the input context, the compression is further linearly dependent on the input. So if you have a token coming in that says dog, the way that it's going to be compressed is going to depend on that token dog. Now, in principle, all of these could be made trainable, including delta as well. But in the Mamba paper, A is, remains as a matrix of constants, and only the delta, the B, and the C end up being trainable. So I'll show you now those equations in full. So it's the very same equation, but delta now depends on the input x1, B depends on the input x1, and C depends on the input x1. A remains a matrix of constant. And here you have it. This is the set of equations that describe uh, Mamba in a very high-level loose sense. And you can see that unlike transformers, there's not a very long array of calculations with all of the previous tokens, because you're only ever concerned with the input token and the current state space. Now, the drawback, as I mentioned earlier, is that the state space, which needs to be large enough to store the compressed information, is going to be larger. And so that's going to increase to some degree the compute that you have to do. And with that quick introduction, we're going to take a look at some real models using a notebook. There are two models we're going to take a look with. There's a more original model here from the state spaces team. This is a Mamba 2.8 billion parameter model, so still about a bit less than half of the parameters of a LAMA 7B model. And it's been trained additionally on Slim Pajamas data set. So this is a base model here. It's not chat fine tuned, so it will keep on blabbing on and you have to give a nice continuation for to get a meaningful prompt. The other model we'll look at is a fine tune of this, which is um, the Instruct Open Hermes model. And this one is chat fine-tuned and it actually responds quite nicely. Um, on It's fine-tuned on a wide variety of data here, including some uh, one-shot data, I believe, and some coding examples too. Although, as we'll see, the coding performance is not quite great on this model yet. So we'll head over to this Mamba notebook. I'll put a link in the description and we're going to get started by doing some installations. 
So there are a few packages we have to install, including Mamba SSM, which is the main package required. We're then going to clone uh, the Mamba repo so we can make use of some of those scripts. Um, so I'll CD into that Mamba directory that is created here. And by the way, you can run this. You can actually run it on a T4 if you like. I'm running on a V100. You could run on an A100 either. T4, of course, being the free one. Now there are uh, lines of commands here just um, for setup. Otherwise, you run into some bugs later on with the inference. Now I'm first going to show you an example doing inference here with the Mamba Slim Pajama dataset. So we'll import some different modules, including uh, the Mamba LM head model. And then we're going to set the model name. Um, we're actually going to import a model from a Trellis repo. The only reason for this is because the Slim Pajama model is saved in 32 bits. So I've just pushed a 16 bit version that's a little bit quicker to download. So we're going to load this and um, we load it onto the GPU. So set the device as CUDA. I've set the D type to float 16. You can set it to B float 16 if you're using an A100, um, but I've set it to float 16 uh, for the T4 so we can run on any device. And that model then should load. It's got just under 2.8 billion parameters, as you can see, and it's about 5.6 gigabytes in size because it's in 16 bit. So two times 28 is uh, around 56. Now here we have the model config. The configuration is different than a traditional transformer. You're not going to see um, any, you're not going to see, for example, a context length um, because that's not a parameter that's of relevance because we're always just looking at the previous token. Here you can see a description of the modules. This has got 64 layers, which is quite a lot actually for a small module. And you can see within the six, each of those blocks, you have the Mamba block here, which is defined by a series of linear projections. Also, you can see uh, Conv1D. This relates to the delta. This is the sizing of the step. So the adjustment we make to the state, the size of that adjustment is actually trainable. And that means depending on which, what input it is, it will make a smaller or a larger adjustment to the state. Then there are some aspects of the model that are quite similar to transformers like the embedding module and uh, also we have LM head and norm modules as well. So we'll do first a quick example of what planets are in our solar system. Notice that this is not a chat fine tuned model so I'm helping the model by not just saying uh, new line new line answer but then saying here is the answer and then a colon. And now we're going to run this through um, this code here and see what we get for output. Um, so I've gone through, there's a series, you can take your time going through it, a series of um, preparations of the tokens, submitting them to the model. And here we have the question, what plants are in the solar system? Answer here is the answer. The plants in our solar system are Mercury, Earth, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So not exactly right, but uh, very close. And you can see the model does blab on because it's not fine tuned to finish. Um, it actually, yeah, it just keeps on blabbing on and that's the nature of base models. But you can see that it's giving a somewhat reasonable answer, not as good, of course, as stronger models, even Lama 7b would probably get the exact eight planets. Now, next, um, we'll move on and take a look at passkey retrieval. So I've uploaded a long file here, Berkshire Hathaway transcript, and I've embedded a passkey halfway through. So that's at the 0.5 mark. And I'm going to set in a chunk. The chunk of that Berkshire tra transcript is going to be almost 16,000 characters, so almost 4,000 tokens. It's a little bit less, actually. This is the largest I've been able to set it to, somewhere around 3,600 tokens, probably, before you start getting issues. Now, interestingly, Mamba has been trained on a context length of 2,000 tokens. Um, so it's interesting that it seems to get passkey retrieval a little bit longer than that because when we run the code, um, as I have done here, and you can see um, the first thing it responds with is actually the pass key. Um, and just to show you, the prompt is respond with the pass key. It gives the text, then respond with the pass key contained with the above text. The pass key is. So we're really helping the model to give the very next word, which indeed is the pass key. And that's correct. Now the model does blab on afterwards, which is understandable because it's not a chat fine tuned model. So overall, passkey retrieval is very good on this uh, very small model. 
Next, I'm going to do some inference on Open Hermes, which is this model here. That's a little bit stronger because it's got the benefit of further fine tuning. So I've just uh, uncommented this here so that we make sure to load that model. You can see the weights are loading here. And the shards have been downloaded, so they're going to be loaded into the model now. And here we have the result of the model, which is the planets in our solar system are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So you can see that in this case, the model is already a bit stronger because of that fine tuning. Now, just another question I'm going to put in here. I'm not going to load the model again, so let's just update the prompt to ask, um, write a piece of Python code to add the first, uh, let's say first five Fibonacci numbers. So let's try that and we'll see what we get back. Okay, so here we have a um, piece of code and we can create a code cell and see if it runs. And indeed, this is the Fibonacci sequence, but the code has not added the numbers together, so it's missing a key piece. And generally with my testing, the coding performance is not great. It's probably not as good as, say, Phi2, um, which is a kind of similarly sized uh, transformer model in terms of parameters. Now, that being said, the amount of training that this model has undergone is not probably comparable to Phi, um, nor is the total amount of tokens that have been used for training. Um, so that's worth considering as well. Now, I did say I would talk a little bit about training this model. And so here I have a short notebook that I've created for training Mamba. It's available for those who've purchased lifetime access to the advanced fine tuning repo. And broadly speaking, it's quite similar to how we might train a normal model, except we don't have a lot of the tools that normally would be available. It's not possible yet, but I believe will be soon to do LoRa fine tuning. That would reduce the memory requirements significantly, but also LoRa tends to be more stable when you're training than having to train all of the parameters. I'll just show you here that we use the trainer. The data setup is very similar to normal. And indeed the trainer, you'll recognize uh, many of the arguments as being the same as what we would use for training a transformer. The same things around gradient accumulation, batch size, um, logging steps, saving steps, whether we're using brain float 16, if we're running on an Ampere type GPU or just FP16 if we're using a T4. And I was able to train the model uh, reasonably stably. I only decided to, tr to remove some of the modules from training, so I wasn't training all of the parameters. I was trying to fine tune the model using an open assist data set. Um, you can check out the Trellis repo on Hugging Face to find uh, the fine tuned model. And you'll see that I was able to get the training loss to reduce um, fairly consistently and able to run uh, an evaluation. Now, also because of the setup, I was not able to do the evaluation set in parallel to the training set. So I couldn't check my evaluation loss as the training was progressing. That's because um, the classes need to be updated to be compatible with how we would do things with transformers. So I would say not an easy model to train right now just because of the toolkit. But I think if we wait even another month, probably a lot of the tools will be available. Now, before I wrap things up, I just want to make a few last comments. I expect there will be more videos on Mamba type architectures. First off, something that's particularly interesting about Mamba is because it has this state, you can run a very long prompt or even a book and store the state of that book and then give that state to somebody else for inference. So instead of having to keep running with very long pre-prompts like we do in transformers, when you use a state-based model, you can just get the state from somebody else who has already run all of that context and start using that state. So that's going to result in a lot of savings. It's kind of like uh, a form of fine tuning, but you don't have to do back propagation. Another key thing you can do with states based models is, in principle, unlimited context training. If you have a batch, you can grab the state at the very end of that batch and use it for the start of the next batch provided that your batches are chunks from a longer piece of text. And so it seems like the current Mamba models are trained on separate 2000 context windows, but in principle, that could really be extended to very long context windows, 
just by grabbing that save state and using it for the start of the next batch. Next, there is currently only a dependence on the input when you look at the selectivity. So when I showed you the equations, the parameters like B, C, those matrices, and also delta, they're trainable and they have a linear dependence on X, the input, but they don't have a dependence on H. Now, dependencies on H are computationally more expensive, so that is a trade-off. But potentially, I think introducing relationships between the input and the state space, um, that might allow for even improved performance, somewhat analogously to how we use attention in transformers. There wouldn't be a tension between uh, each of the previous tokens, but there would be a tension between the state space and between the input token. As I mentioned, a lot of the techniques that work well in transformers will probably work well in this uh, state space mindset as well. LoRa is very easily applicable anywhere you have large matrices. Uh, represent them with lower rank forms and fine-tune th fine those. Mamba MOE, the benefits of mixture of experts that come with transformers potentially also could be applied uh, to the Mamba architectures. You would segregate um, just running in parallel, train and have a router that will decide which um, series of Mamba models to go to. And that should also improve the inference time by allowing each of the Mamba models to be smaller than just one large model. And that's it for this first video on the Mamba or state space model. I think that it's an interesting direction because of how it allows you to compress the context. The way that we currently attend to every previous token with a transformer is fundamentally inefficient and something that I think will improve as we move forward. Now, the Mamba architecture probably has quite a bit of room for improvement from where it is. So I expect things to evolve and some of the tricks that we've learned from transformers to be applied over to Mamba. The largest Mamba right model right now is about 2.8 billion parameters. Pretty soon, I would expect somebody is going to come out with one that's at least 7 billion in size. And it'll be very interesting when we get up to having similar sizes, say to Llama 70B, how the performance compares and what kind of speed ups we get, particularly with longer contexts. I think it can change the mindset as well for fine tuning because you can just run inference and save the state, that's going to change the mindset of how people feel fine tuning is important and add an extra tool to the toolkit of optimizing models for deployment. Let your comments live below. Cheers, folks.